now we will study destination initiated transfer again there is for any kind of data transfer you will always need a source unit and a destination unit the data bus will always be directed from the source unit to the destination unit here the signal direction changes here the signal was from source the strobe signal was from source to destination now the strobe signal is from destination to the source and hence its name since the strobe signal is arising from the destination unit to the source unit hence the name destination initiated data transfer since this data transfer will always be initiated by the destination from the timing diagram now the destination unit is ready for data transfer so at time t1 it enables the strobe signal the strobe signal is enabled at time t1 the destination unit enables the strobe signal after some settle time that is delta t time at time t2 on sensing the strobe signal the strobe signal is generated by the destination unit the source unit senses the signal and so at time t2 it puts data on the data bus since the destination unit is asking for the data it is ready for the data so the source unit will put the data on the data bus till time t3 t3 minus t2 is the hold time is the acceptance time this is the time during which the data will be read from the data bus by the destination unit so at time t3 when the destination unit has read the data it will disable the strobe signal the destination unit disables the strobe strobe signal because it uh, generated the strobe signal so it will only disable the strobe signal so at time t3 the strobe signal is disabled at time t4 that is t4 minus t3 is the invalid invalidation time the data bus the data on the data bus will be invalidated this is how data transfer happens between the two units in the two units the source and the destination in two different ways the source initiated data transfer and the destination initiated data transfer but the disadvantage of both these data transfer is one by one in during source initiated data transfer when the source unit is putting data on the data bus it is after putting data on the data bus it is enabling the strobe signal but it does not know uh, after putting data on the data bus it enables the strobe signal and after some stipulated time that is hold time it disables the strobe signal it is not getting any signal from the destination unit whether it has received the data where whether it has not received the data whether it has read the data or not read the data so the source unit does not know whether destination unit has received the data or it has received the correct data during destination initiated data transfer the destination unit is asking for for data from the data bus uh, asking uh, for data from the source unit it generates the strobe signal it disables the strobe signal it assumes that the source unit would have put data on the data bus and it reads the data from the data bus but there is no confirmation from the source unit that whatever uh, that it had put the data or it had put the uh, it might read a garbage value also which was read uh, which was put on the data bus so there is no confirmation whether in this or in this that the data transferred is correct whether the destination unit here read the data or whether so the source unit kept the data on the data bus so now we will study hand shaking method because of these two disadvantages the strobe method uh, because of the disadvantages of strobe method now we will study the hand shaking method